oh, do not tell the priest of our plight, or he will call it a sin. But we've been out in the woods all night, a conjuring summer in. Good news we bring by word of mouth, good news for cattle and corn. Now as the sun comes up in the south, with oak and ash and thorn. Hello and welcome, my name is Frances Billinghouse, and this is the third now in the series of the Sabbaths, Beltane, the gateway to summer. I'm an initiated witch of a contemporary witchcraft tradition here in Adelaide, South Australia, an author, and before we go any further, including acknowledgement of the poem, A Tree Song, from Park of Poots Hill by Rudyard Kipling. I'm just going to share my screen with you. So we can talk about Beltane. And this is already is causing a little bit of a discussion on social media, probably just as well. But before we go any further, I would like to remove myself from the screen as I acknowledge country. I acknowledge the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains who are the traditional custodians of this land. In doing so, I pay my respects past to the elders past, present and emerging. Now I'm just going to go back a little bit. Because we're talking about Beltane and it's coming up to the end of October and I follow uh, Wheel of the Year which is based on my book that's in the Sacred Wheel which has been incorporated within contemporary witchcraft, traditional Wicca, modern paganism, Druidry and a lot of other similar traditions these days. However, anything that in relation to the Southern Hemisphere or how to adapt things from the to into the Southern Hemisphere seems to be causing a lot of debate these days. In particular, Beltane, especially of late, because it also coincides with uh, a very commercialized these days version of Halloween as we follow more and more the Americanized version of trick-or-treating around the subway and I, while I personally have nothing against that people can do whatever they want as I've explained in other videos even the very fact that I personally am observing the southern wheel of the year has caused some people to not appreciate that I too am entitled to my opinions like they are but we're going to move forward and I want to talk about Beltane and why I observe it in the Southern Hemisphere as opposed to it being Halloween or so on. The sun has now reached the midpoint between the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. It continues to bring more and more light and warmth to the waiting earth as the hours of daylight lengthen and the nights slowly shorten with each rotation of the earth, getting increasingly warmer. This is the time of the Gaelic and Grenbrig, or the greatest sun, that marks the commencement of the light half of the year. The Australian Beltane tends to coincide with the flowering of the native bottle brush, as we see here on the left, which is now a mass of red flowers. And the Iroquois flame tree also erupts on the right in fire with its brilliant scarlet red flowers, as they both seem to acknowledge that summer is around the corner. In places where there are oak trees, these now have their green mantles and bird life is active. Another native, the kangaroo apple with its clusters of violet flowers offsetting against its dark green lobed leaves are also in flower. In the southern sky, Beltane heralds the return of the brilliant constellation of Orion the Hunter. And here he is just coming in on the far left. Frigal here 
And here's his belt just here. Oops, I'll go back. In the north east, the reddish star of Albibaran, which is here in Taurus, has joined the Pleiades. And we can just see the Pleiades coming through, marking Taurus the ball. The great square of Pegasus, which is here, is prominent straddling the meridian and in the southwest Scorpius is setting. So we move down here to Scorpius and then down on the horizon we have the southern cross, crux, with the two pointer stars. For the Naranjuri people of the lower Murray River and the Kurong areas, the Pleiades, which is back up here at Taurus, also known as the Seven Sisters, marks the time when initiations into cultural wisdom and knowledge takes place. This is also the time when swimming is considered restricted in the waters because these waters are too full of life, it can be dangerous. Also along the Kurong, the flocks of the Australian pelicans, the totem animal for the Naranjiri people, catch the warming air currents which allows their huge bodies to lift effortlessly in the skies. This is the time of La Guadan, the time of warmth which lasts from November through to January. And with the local Ghana people, we are still here in Bolutri. Begins to warm. In the northern hem, so the top end, we are around here. It's the time of the pre monsoon. The weather is beginning to increase, the humidity along with the temperatures, the thunderstorms build to bring rain to the dry land, and the acid waters running off the floodplains into the billabongs cause the fish to die due to the low oxygen levels. With the increasing amount of water, bird life and new growth will soon appear. The water levels enable the barramundi to move from the water holes to the estuaries where they breed and the local people move to the rockier lands, seeking shelter from the approaching storms in the impending wet season. So there's a lot of movement, a lot of happening as both in the top end and here on the Adelaide Plains, people are preparing themselves. Within contemporary witchcraft, Beltane marks the Herios Gamus, the sacred union or the sacred marriage between the god who has been the hunter, the warrior of spring, now matured into manhood, and the goddess who has gone from the maiden now into the role of the mother. With the increasing pulsations of the rhythms of the earth, the god prepares himself for the tasks and responsibilities that lie ahead, that of becoming the all-powerful ruler of the summer months and the partner to his beloved goddess and subsequent father. The goddess is ready to receive and to shape the energy of the god. This alchemical process of bringing forth a new life again will take place deep within her. She is the cauldron creating life. And as the god and goddess flirt and pursue each other, they become more and more aware of not only their own sex, but of their whole purpose in the wider scheme of things. The god transforming now into the lord of the greenwood begins to realize that there is more to life than adventure and abandonment of the hunt. He realizes that he needs the goddess to give form and purpose to his power. Just as she realizes that without power of the God, her cauldron of life will always be barren. And the two unite. With the goddess representing the earth and the God, the sun, enabling the earth to be fertilized and impregnated with the seed that will sustain life. As the goddess represents the land and the god, the life force of the land. Beltane is the festival that honors fertility 
of the earth. And some wonderful celebrations happened in the Northern Hemisphere of Beltane, in particular in Scotland. And this is an image that was taken from a Beltane Fire Festival a few years ago. The word Beltane is believed to have come from the Irish Gaelic, with Beltane being the Scottish Gaelic equivalent. And both words are believed to mean about fire. According to John Matthews, he believes that Beltane also is a derivative of a need fire and also a corruption of Belius, a god whose worship was widespread throughout Britain and Gaul. Belius may have been a solar god, as his name can be translated as bright fire. Beltane marks the beginning of summer, the time of feasting, merrymaking, and celebration. For us in the Southern Hemisphere, this is the time when the sun enters Scorpio. While on the other side of the world, the Druids were believed to have kindled two great bell fires on the top of the nearest Beacon Hills. These need fires had healing properties and people would pass through the flames to ensure protection for the coming year. And here we see two great fires being lit. They would also drive their cattle between the two bonfires before taking them up to the summer pastures. How ancient these fires or this festival is, is rather debatable. Ron Hutton indicates that there is evidence indicating that at least in Ireland that dates back to that early 19th century. However, in Scotland, it seems to predate by another century back to as far as the 18th century, especially in the Highlands and on the Isles. And according to Irish mythology, in particular, the, the records that form the Irish mythological beings and tribes have come to the land known as the Book of Invasions, the mysterious mythical race known as the Tooth of the Dunnan arrived in the Irish shores at Beltane, as is marked in the song of Omregan. And I'm just referring to my book to read a section from it. In particular, and this comes from Robert Graves, the White Goddess, where it is said. I am the stag of seven times. I am the wide flood of the plain. I am the wind of, winter, of deep waters. I am the shining tear of the sun. I am a hawk on the cliff. I am fair amongst the flowers. I am a god who sets the head fire of smoke. And even today in Ireland, again, like with Scotland, how there's been a resurgence in Celtic festivals, especially the fire festivals. There's also a resurgence in County Meath, where on the hill of, and I do apologise for my really bad Gaelic pronunciation, Youth Neath, there are now Beltane festivals, or there was pre-COVID, and this image down here is from one of their festivals. A symbol that's usually associated with Beltane is of course the Maypole. And it dates back to at least the 13th century. And even then the, the records indicate that it was quite well established in English folk customs, but also across Europe from the Pyrenees, which borders France and Spain through to Scandinavia and in, even into Russia itself. In 15th century Londoner, the Puritan Philip Stubbs described the mal, 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 maypole, put my teeth back, and described the maypole as being covered with flowers and drawn by oxen whose horns were tipped with gay nosegays. Men, women, and children followed with great devotion. They would set up the maypole 
in the town square, decorate it with golden boughs and dance around it. His distaste for such an event was also recorded. As at the banquets and the feasts, the people would dance about as the heathen people did in the dedication of their idols, whereof this is a perfect pattern or rather a thing itself, as he said about the maypole. There's a number of interpretations as to what the maypole represents. Some believe because it's a tall, usually a bough from a fir or a pine tree. And that's traditionally, that represents the phallic, well, it's very phallic symbol. And when it's dug in, in the hole and planted into the earth, that represents, again, the harimus germus of the joining of the masculine and the feminine. And with the people dancing around the pole, that seemed to represent the joining of the energies of the masculine and feminine energies. The traditional colors of the ribbons also have specific meanings. The white represents the semen of the god, while the red represents the menstrual blood of the goddess. Again, both of very natural life force energies. And therefore, when the ribbons are woven around the pole, the dancers celebrate the fertility of the god and goddess. With one circle of dancers moving clockwise, which in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the direction of life. And the other ring of dancers moving anti-clockwise, the direction of death in the Northern Hemisphere. Of course, here in the Southern Hemisphere, our direction of life is anti-clockwise, while our direction of death is clockwise. And here, the maypole is crowned with flowers and people are dancing around. And you can see with people going under and over with the ribbons, you end up with this pattern all down the pole. Beltane, of course, is the time of the year when we can ask ourselves about our sexuality, as well as our expressions of our true selves. Now is the perfect time for some self-analyzing. Are we manipulating or man manipulated by others? Do we find ourselves coerced into doing things against our will? Or do we even do this to other people? What do we think of our own body image, our own sexuality, our own sensuality? Are we okay with it? Do we wish to conform to social media stereotypes? Or do they have no effect on us? What fears or inadequacies do we have about our bodies? With Beltane, and I might just stop this. And come full screen again. There we go. So Beltane.